Hi, this is Craig Severance from the Zero Energy Channel. Come join us as we work to address the challenge of moving toward a world with zero energy from fossil fuels. Here is a uh, space comparison and, and practicality comparison for, of a tiny house kitchen. You can either choose to have something like a full-size range oven, which these two appliances are sitting on top of. You can see the size of that. Or, for our tiny house, we've chosen these two appliances, the left being our range, a induction burner from Fagor, which works great, and we'll talk more about that, and on the right being our oven, which is a Cusin Art toaster oven, and we'll go into some of that. Compare the space requirements and you'll see how this is so much more practical for a tiny house and yet they work. Then we're going to try out this. We tried a microwave convection oven from a brand that I won't mention and it just didn't work at all. Microwave work and convection didn't. So we're trying a toaster oven from Cusin Art. A, uh, the model 200 we're trying out this thing has plenty of room for four fish fillets which is or we're, tomorrow we're going to try a 12 inch pizza which it says it can also do also toasts toasts uh, bagels and toast of course because it is a toaster oven and it'll broil and so if we're going to try this out to baking our fish in this toaster oven my wife wants to be able to have an oven even in the tiny house. And one of the things when you order this on Amazon, it says you might want to order a bunch of racks and stuff and accessories with it, but look at what actually comes in the box. It had a, a basic oven rack and a, a pan. The, the fish is sitting in the pan that I that oiled, and that's on the oven rack. And Eric, you want to hold up the other pieces that came with this? We'll start with the rotisserie before you do the, that. This you is can, a rotisserie, you yeah. know, and it, it you can quite put a, uh, a leg of lamb or a chicken or a duck in there, and it'll turn automatically, roasting it. And what's that other weird-looking thing? This is the handle for the rotisserie to remove things, so you don't burn yourself when trying to get that in and out of there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep, and probably mainly out. And and this, what's that a little rack for? Broiling. Broiling, so it goes way up high in position four for broiling. So it seems a rather versatile oven, little oven. It comes with an owner's manual, which is actually possible to read. And I'm trying this now, so it says to to bake. We put it on one or two. There's four positions for the rack. We have to turn the selector dial to bake, and the temperature will flash. Oh, yes, of course, I threw away the packages of fish. So, like, yeah, so we'll just try this. Okay, so the directions say to turn the selector dial till it says bake. Oh, there it's a. Uh, there it looks like the toasting function. There it's the bake is flashing, and I actually started at 350, but I did this before and ran out and didn't tape it correctly, so I set it to 425 already. And see, this is flashing. Do you want to start this or not? So I'm going to say start. There, and it is, wow, oh, that's on preheat, and we'll see how this works. All right, let's see how adjustable this is. It turns out that the package, which I threw away, said it was supposed to be 375 for this particular brand of fish. So, uh, ooh, you just press it, and you can adjust the temperature. You press it again, and there you go. It's on preheat. And I'm not supposed to have actually put the fish in yet, according to the directions, because the timer doesn't start until you uh, 
it reaches the preset temperature. Oh, so there, and, and oh, and I didn't set the timer either. So the package said it was supposed to be 25 minutes. But so let's try that. Let's see. Um, you know, this is the typical mail method of doing things. Um, why would anybody want to read the directions? But um, see, there we're fine with that. There, okay, 25 minutes, and now it doesn't start until counting down until it reaches the temperature. So there we go. And uh, ooh, it's getting warm. You see the, the, the glowing heating coils. There are two on the bottom and two on the top. Boy, that really ought to work. And looks like a regular electric oven, just slower. I think my wife may be very happy with this. Although I doubt she's going to be very happy with my cooking style. Okay. The left surface here is very hot. You can't touch it. So, so is the top. Oddly enough, the right side isn't as hot. Uh, but that doesn't no guarantee that won't, will always be true. You'll notice there's all kinds of ventilation here for letting the heat air in and out. So forget about installing this in a wall. This is intended to be a countertop unit. The uh, time has started counting down. It, uh, it, when it reached the preset temperature, which it only took about five minutes um, of preheating, pretty good preheat time, it, uh, it beeped, gave a little small beep, and now I'm noticing the time is counting down. So it's it's baking the fish. Okay, the booklet says the owner's manual booklet said that convection function um, circulates warm air around the food while it's baking, and says it can make it go faster and cook it more evenly. So I push the convection function button. You can turn that on or off anytime during the cooking process and it is running very soft sound to the fan it's not going to drive you out of your kitchen it just reached the end of the cooking cycle and beeped and it looks like the fish might be ready let's check it out Get a fork and see if it flakes. Yep. It's doing very nicely. Flaking. This fish looks done. For such a tiny little uh, oven, it did a not fine job. Cooked all four of them in their recommended time. So I believe we have a new oven. Okay, so we're uh, our next test of the Houston Art uh, toaster oven is going to be a 12-inch pizza from one of the, um, you know, the take and bake place, um, and uh, we're going to try this out with a kilowatt hour meter over here, which you can see reads zero kilowatt hours right now because we haven't started this up yet and it's now time to since we're doing some more complicated things and we successfully cush the fish to actually read the directions and it turns out there are lots of different functions uh, with this particular oven uh, we use bake for the fish and we mentioned it has a toast function it, it has a roast function, leftovers, um, convection, that's a, just a button that you can turn on, which we ended up doing about halfway through the fish because fish, I didn't understand why it was needed, but turns out most of the time you're going to use the convection button, button, rotisserie, keep warm, broil, Bagel, which is does it a little differently than toast because they they are different, 
and pizza it has an actual pizza button on the menu so we're going to try to find that and tell it to cook the pizza so interesting thing about reading directions you always should do that at least halfway through the process here we uh, open the door and put the pizza in when it reached preheat temperature but with such a small oven and as long as we left the door open it ended up re reheating the preheat for quite a while because it lost a lot of the heat and if you're going to do that you better have it ready just slip right in so it took about as long to preheat the second time around as it did the first time so we might end up overcooking this if we let it go the full length of time but it seems to be cooking the pizza really nicely and you'll notice well I've noticed that it, it has to maintain temperature it's reduced the power on the electric resistance strips there's two below and two above you can see those are not glowing as sprightly which would be what you would expect it doesn't take as much power to maintain the temperature as it did to reach the temperature so if you want to save power I might want to just throw it in and not open that again until it's done and figure out how that changes the cooking time because every time you have to restore the temperature you're using a lot of power it's done it with four minutes left on the clock because of the time we spent having to reheat it, it that it's been in there which was four or five minutes so Eric let's go ahead and stop it it's done probably a little overdone and so you're gonna have to work with this uh, like any oven to learn what it really does but the nice thing about it is if anything it cooks a little too well and for a small oven it just really has plenty of cooking ability and you're just going to regulate this uh, timing to be exactly right for yourself so, but we have pizza let's we'll see how many kilowatt hours it took what's the reading on the kilowatt hour meter eric 0.40 so that's 400 400 watt hours so that's a good measure for the people doing off-grid okay so it has reached preheat on a second pizza that we are experimenting with 11 minutes instead of 14 as the setting of the heating time and we didn't open the door and lose all the preheat it had heat this time so we are saying we wanted to see what was the kilowatt hour consumption just to reach temperature now the preheating uh, kilowatt hour consumption and that ends up being two hundred watt hours twenty point two kilowatt hours or two hundred watt hours so that was half of the energy uh, for the whole cooking experience last time just to get it to temperature so we're going to see how long this takes to cook this it's already looking pretty starting to be pretty cooked so we're probably not going to go even 11 minutes on the heat cycle let you know Okay, it still thinks that we set it for 11 minutes of heat cycle but we put it in for the preheat cycle and it's done after just four minutes of the heat cycle I'm going to sh shut this off so we don't overcook way overcook this okay check the kilowatt hours there's 0.24 kilowatt hours which is 240 watt hours so we cut 160 watt hours off the 400 watt hours the doing it the 
opening it after preheat and the total time was also less too so if you're doing the off-grid thing and want to save it I think you could figure out how to do it like we just did you'll have your pizza you're ready to eat sooner too as a conclusion art we think we're going to be really happy with the Houston art 200 after experiencing some problems make it, trying to get a microwave convection oven to work we're very happy with this it really works well if anything it works a little too well and we're going to need to reduce our cooking times as a result but we can easily live with that and that means less power consumption in fact this toaster oven might be a really good energy saver comparable to what microwaves claim to be but it cooks food better and of course it's a great space saver so we're going to be pretty happy with this for our off-grid tiny house. Hello, my name is Eric. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up down below. Also, if you want to subscribe, that's good too. Join us on the Zero Energy channel.